Hello, everyone, and welcome to our Nature in Your Classroom Naturehood live stream. I am so excited to welcome you all here this afternoon. I can't wait to get out and start exploring with all of you. We have so much to do today, and it's going to be amazing. So my name is Jasmine. Welcome, everyone. And I want to also introduce some of the other folks who are helping us out uh, with the live stream today. So we also have Raya here, who's going to be helping us. Hi, everybody. I'm so excited to get creative today. <laughs> and Linda is here with us as well. Hello, everyone. I'm also excited to start drawing and hopefully everyone got their creative mind and get ready to start. Amazing. Thank you, Raya and Linda. We have some other folks who are helping us out on the back end as well, making sure everything runs smoothly and helping out with the chat as well. Speaking of the chat, if you have any questions as we're moving through today, feel free to pop those in the chat or any comments related to what we're talking about. I want to make sure that we're keeping the chat responsible and on topic. So make sure that anything you're putting in the chat are questions or comments related to what we're talking about today. There is also a worksheet that is uh, goes together with our live stream today. We're going to be putting a link in the chat where teachers can request this worksheet to download for their class to use. If you don't have it, that's totally okay, but it is there available for you to use if you would like to. So I want to share a little bit more about me. So my name is Jasmine. As I mentioned, I am outside and I wonder if you can tell I'm actually outside in an urban space. So this is a little park that is actually really close to my house in downtown Toronto. And we are going to be spending some time here. I'm going to be bringing you all along with me as we explore today. I am here with the Toronto and Region Conservation Authority. You can see that on my jacket here. So that is our logo. And you'll notice that the biggest word in our logo is conservation. That's because that's probably the most important thing we do is most of the work that we do here at TRCA is all about conservation, which means to take care and protect. What are we conserving? Well, we're conserving nature. We're conserving the environment, water and the earth. And we're thinking about how we can make the greater Toronto area a healthier place for everyone, including you and me. Often, in order to do our work, we like to work with different people, like we're doing today with all of you. We also like to work with sometimes different organizations as well, which is also something we're doing today. So this live stream is a part of the Naturehood program, which is a program hosted by Nature Canada. And the Naturehood program is all about getting people like you and me outside in nature, right in our neighborhoods or should I say naturehoods. So that's why I'm right in my neighborhood today and that's exactly what we're doing. Um, we'll put a link in the chat so you can learn more about naturehood if you're interested. It's a really great program and um, I think the goal of it is really great and something that I really believe in as well. Getting everyone outside, connecting to nature and exploring the local wildlife and biodiversity that lives here right in the city. Okay. So to get us started today, before we start exploring, I want to give us a little bit of background about kind of what we're doing. And so one kind of thing that we're going to be thinking a lot today is about how to become a nature champion. What is a nature champion? I want you all to kind of think about that a little bit. Maybe if you have an idea, you can put it in the chat or raise your hand so your teacher can call on you and they can help you uh, write that in the chat. What is a nature champion? Hmm. There are many different kinds of things a nature champion might be. I like to think of it as someone who is a spokesperson for nature, someone who advocates for nature and, and really sees the value in nature and wants others to see that too. Um, there are many different ways to be a nature champion and uh, we're going to be kind of doing one of these ways together. We're all going to be coming be becoming nature champions together as we go through our live stream today. And the way that we're going to do that is by exploring nature, the nature in our naturehood, through kind of a different perspective. We are going to be exploring it through more of an artistic perspective, more of a creative perspective. So as you can see, there is a lot of nature around me. And as we're exploring this space, we are going to be kind of thinking about some of the different ways we can kind of perceive 
these natural pieces. We're going to be thinking about the shapes that we're seeing. We're going to be thinking about the colors that we're seeing. And we're going to be thinking about kind of some of the interactions between um, these pieces of nature in order to inspire us to create our own pieces of nature artwork. And so there's many different ways to do nature art. I'm sure many of you have already kind of created nature artwork before in your lives. One of my favorite ways to create nature art is by creating rubbings um, out of leaves or twigs and using crayons to kind of capture the imprint of that on a piece of paper. Another really cool way to create nature art is by creating something called ephemeral art. And so the idea with ephemeral art is that it's a piece of art that you've created made out of a kind of materials that you find. And um, this word ephemeral means that it's not going to last forever. Eventually it will kind of get blown away or maybe taken apart or fall apart. And that's okay. It's really about creating that piece of artwork in the moment and connecting to nature in this kind of in the moment way. And so you can see there are many different ways to create ephemeral art. Um, you might be using kind of rocks that you can find around you in your space. You might be using maybe some leaves or other pieces of nature that you can find in your space. Um, and maybe you're just celebrating the beauty of this nature. Maybe you're creating nature that nature art that might look like something else as well. So today we're not going to be doing uh, crayon rubbings, we're not going to be creating ephemeral art, we're going to be doing something a little different. What we're going to be doing is creating a nature collage right on our pieces of paper. And so what is a collage? Some of you probably know this, a collage is kind of just a collection of different images or different things. And so that's exactly what we're doing. You might be wondering, Jasmine, are we going outside? Are we collecting leaves and twigs and then gluing those onto our paper and creating kind of a 3D collage? Well, no, not exactly. I'm gonna ask Raya to share an example of some of the nature art that we're going to be creating today. And she's gonna tell you about kind of her thought process behind creating it um, and share a little bit more about what it looks like as well. All right, thank you, Jasmine. Yes, so the other day I was outside and I was walking through a space that, um, it was in Toronto, you can see that smokestack in the background, but I was walking through a space where there was a plant right next to me that I just love. And I've known about this plant for a long time. So you can see that it has the kind of dark red tufts at the top and it has these um, brown stems and it actually has a very soft kind of stem. So whenever I feel, whenever I pass this plant and I can reach without going off trail, I can reach it. Then I kind of touch the stem a little bit because it's it just relaxes me. <laughs> it's so soft. So um, I wanted to draw it. And um, I started drawing the stem itself. This is my finished drawing here. And I started drawing the stem um, and then I drew another stem. And I was thinking about how much I love this plant. The name of the plant is actually sumac. If you're not familiar with it, it's called sumac or sagamore sumac. Um, but for this drawing, the name doesn't matter. I love it so much. I, started, I drew a heart. I couldn't resist like drawing a heart to show how much I love this plant. And then I was thinking about that picture and there's like other plants there too. So I kind of drew in a little bit more vegetation here at the bottom. And um, sometimes I've seen in the past, I've seen chickadees eating the berries from this plant. So I drew a little chickadee, which I actually am surprised it turned out better than I thought it would. I'm not very good at drawing birds. <laughs> and um, finally, I thought, you know, there's another plant that I also love. It's not in this picture, but when I have my heart here, I want to draw the plants that I love. Um, and so I drew some pine needles from the white pine. And I know the, the white pine is a tree that happens to have five needles in every like bundle. So that's why I drew five. Um, and so I put it all together and I really love how this picture ended up working out. It was better than I thought it would just from starting with like some brown lines and some messy little red squiggles. And it turned out to sort of be like a celebration of some of the things that I love in the nature that I pass by and that I've learned about in my life. I'm going to make a card out of this and send it to somebody, send it to a good friend um, who I also love. So that's my plan with my nature art. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing, Raya. I think it's really interesting how you were inspired originally by that piece of sumac, and then this kind of artwork grew out of that to create this collage of all the pieces of nature that excite you and, and that you love. And I love that you represented that emotion using the heart. I think, I think that's great. So there are many different ways to kind of do this nature art, this kind of 
drawing of a collage. And there are many different kinds of perspectives on how to create this as well. We just heard from Raya, but now I wanna hear from Annie and Wally. So Annie and Wally are two nature champions who live here in Toronto, who actually created their own nature artworks um, very recently, and they were kind enough to share that with us. And so I want to share you, share with you a little clip of them kind of talking a little bit about their artwork and talking about the piece of nature that inspired them. Um, my name's Annie, and my name's Wally. What grade? Grades are you in? Um, I'm in SK Kindergarten, and I'm in grade four. And w what have you drawn? Um, we both drew trees. Yeah. Why did you dry trees? Maybe because we like we love trees. We love like trees. They're, 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 they're our favorite kind of plant. Why is that? Because um they, they number one they help you you they help you breathe obviously and um number two I just really like how like. They're home to so many things. I like how they carry shade. All right. Thank you so much, Annie and Wally, for creating those pieces of art and sharing them with us. Wow. What a great inspiration. Trees are so amazing. And I love that you kind of were thinking about the ways and the reasons why you love trees and then really kind of incorporated that into your artwork. All right, so we've heard from Raya, we've heard from Annie and Wally, we've gotten some inspiration from them about what we're going to do. Now it's time for us to get started. I think it's time for, for us to create our own pieces of art. So what do we need? Um, there are a few kind of tools that will help us as we're creating our nature art today. The first thing that you're going to need is a piece of paper. This can be any shape, any size. It can also be kind of an older piece of paper. Maybe there's some things on one side, but the other side might be good as new. So maybe you're doing it on a scrap piece of paper or a good on one side piece of paper. If you have our worksheet, then maybe you're creating your um, nature art on our worksheet as well. Next thing that you're going to need is your drawing tools. So this could be a pen, this could be a pencil, but as we're looking outside today, we're going to be noticing shapes, but we're also going to be noticing colors. So if you have pencil crayons or markers or crayons, or even some paint um, that can capture those colors that we're seeing, then that is amazing. So you need your piece of paper, you need your drawing tools, and then you also need your creativity. We're going to put our imagination caps on, our creativity caps on, and we're going to get exploring. I'm going to turn you all around now and let's have a look at the first piece of nature that we're going to be exploring. I'm going to bring you over here and I want to start us off today with a tree. Just like Annie and Wally, I love trees and in almost every urban space, every urban park in the city, you can find trees. You see there are many, many trees in this space. I want to start by taking a really close look at this tree. We're going to zoom in and have a look at this bark. There are so many deep cracks in this bark and I also want you to notice the colors that we're seeing. So we're seeing this kind of lighter gray, we're seeing black, we're seeing this kind of tan brown, and then we're also seeing some colors over here. I don't know if you can tell, I'm seeing some green, I'm even seeing some yellow, and I wonder where those colors are coming from. If you have an idea, you can go ahead and put it in the chat. I happen to know that these are created by lichen. This color is coming from lichen, which is growing here on this tree. And so lichen's really, really cool. It's this combination of algae and fungi that kind of grow together and create what we're seeing here. And so lichen appears in so many different colors. And if I come on the other side of this tree here, let me see if I can find some. Here we go. We're seeing these big splotches of this bright, bright green. So cool. Lichen is one of my favorite things to notice when I'm outside in a nature space. Um, and you're only going to notice it if you're actually taking that closer look and you're really zooming in at some nature that you're finding. 
And I'm not really good at drawing lichen, but I'm just drawing the blotches of the colors that Jasmine said, because that is what it looks like to me. <laughs> I think that looks great, Raya. I think that looks amazing. Yeah, we're really focusing in on these colors. So beautiful. Okay, so we've looked a little bit at the bark. We've looked at some of the lichen that's growing on the bark of this big tree. And now I want us to look up. So imagine with me, you are raising your necks. I'm going to zoom us up, 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 up. Here we go and have a look at the branches of this tree. Way high up in the sky, so much higher than I am in this space. This tree is shooting off in so many different directions. And I think it's a really kind of artistic image of the, the shapes that these branches are creating against the sky. So I invite all of you to kind of <laughs> give it a try at drawing some of these branches and the ways that they're kind of jutting out in these different directions. I'm making a bunch of V's to make my branches or Y's at the end of my, on my drawing. Yeah, a bunch of letter Y's. I think that's all I can do with this tree. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a great technique. Yeah. <laughs> and you can even see, um, if we're thinking about the sky as the backdrop, what color is that sky? So it's sort of a white, but is it a bright white? I don't think so. I'm almost seeing some tinges of blue. I think the clouds might be starting to fade away and I think some of the blue sky might be returning. So we're seeing this patchwork of branches against this blue, blue sky. Beautiful. I'm gonna bring you all down. My for the sky. I don't have a light blue color. Amazing. I'm going to bring us down the trunk once again. And let's see what we can find at the base of this tree. So as you noticed in the sky, on those branches, we weren't seeing any leaves. But I want to see if we can find some. Maybe they, these are might be ones that fell during the fall. So we'll zoom in. Let me see if I can find a great example to show you of what these leaves look like. Hmm, how about this one here? So have a look at the shape of this leaf. You can see it has these kind of, these lobes on the side that are smooth and round, and then they kind of jut out in these points. This is quite a spiky looking leaf. I'm not sure if you can tell, I'll try to get a little bit closer, but we can also see the veins that are in this leaf as well. We see that one main vein and then we see the veins that are kind of jutting out to each point and each lobe as well. And so I know that these veins are how this leaf gets water and how it gets nutrients from the trunk of this tree and from the branches. I really like the shape of that leaf, Jasmine. Hold on to it for one more moment because I want to make sure I have the shape right. And I see I that know. there's like different types of browns. So there's a light brown and dark brown. But if, if any students don't have different colors, you can even just use a pencil and press harder for the veins and then press lighter for the rest of the leaf. Cool. Yeah, so Thanks, cool. Mm -hmm. And I wanna flip it around just for a second. You can see that the veins are a lot more pronounced on the back of this leaf as well. Oh, wow, that's cool. So cool, and you can imagine feeling it. It's very bumpy, actually. Awesome. We've explored this tree a little bit, and now I want to kind of take us over to a different space in this park. I'm going to swing us around. Boop, boop, boop. And earlier, when I was exploring in this space, I noticed that the garden of this park has some really interesting features. And so let me tell you, in the summer, this space looks so different. But in the winter, there can be lots to discover as well. I want to zoom in on this plant right here, and I have to be a little bit careful. I'll show you why. <laughs> so this plant actually has what look like very big thorns. Have a look at that. Now I'm wondering, what do those remind you of? What do you think when you see these sharp thorns? Jasmine, when I'm looking at them right now, they, they kind of remind me of teeth. <laughs> teeth. Oh, my goodness. Very sharp, very pointy teeth. 
I'm going to draw yeah. teeth with my pencil. <laughs> Have a look at those colors. Linda, what colors are you seeing in this? I am seeing yellow, orange, a little bit of felge, uh, a little bit of dark brown. Yeah, a variety of warm shades in those thorns. A big variety of different colors. Yeah, warm shades. I love that. So as we're looking at this um, stem, I want to tell you a little bit about why plants have thorns. And one of the main reasons why they create thorns is to kind of protect themselves. So especially in the winter, a lot of animals like rabbits and deer will want to chew away on these stems. And so by creating thorns, it's kind of a way for them to protect themselves. Now I'm going to have to unstick myself from some of these thorns. And I want to show you another piece of this plant, another part of this plant. Let me see if I can get you down to show you. Here we go. Check it out. Cool. So having a look at this, this tells me that this plant is actually a rose. And this is what's called a rose hip. So this is kind of the fruit of the rose where we can find those seeds. But especially in the winter, they are so beautiful, that bright red color. And then they also have these kind of interesting spiky bits that come off the end as well. So you How can many draw are on that plant right now? Is it just the one berry or are there more? It actually, I'm only seeing this one berry on this plant. And I'm oh. wondering where some of the other berries might have gone. So I know that with fruits like this um, that has seeds inside, I know that there are animals who really enjoy kind of eating um, some of these pieces of nature. And I'm pretty sure I've seen birds actually eating rose hips before. So as we're exploring today, we might not get the chance to see any animals, but we know that there are animals that live in Toronto and that spend time in urban parks like this one. I encourage you all to maybe draw an animal that you think might enjoy snacking on a piece of nature like this one. So maybe that's a bird. Maybe there's a type of bird that you really, really love. Maybe a chickadee or a sparrow or a cardinal. Those are those bright red birds that we can see here in the winter. And think about what your bird is doing. Maybe it's flying through the air. Maybe it's creating a nest in maybe the tree that you might have drawn. Or maybe it's starting to chew and peck away at this rose hip. Amazing. I'm going to pull myself out of this <laughs> thorny rose bush mm -hmm. and I'm going to bring us over here. I want to show you a part of this tiny little tree that is growing in this garden area. So if we go up, 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 up the trunk of this tree all the way to the branches, then at the very tip of these branches, I'm noticing something really cool. And so have a look at that. Tell me what is growing on the ends of these branches. They look sharp. Are they needles or like some kind of funny needle? That's a great question, Raya. Yeah, so they are kind of sharp, but they also have a little bit of give. They're kind of squishy, actually. And so these are the buds of this tree. So a tree might create these buds in the fall before it gets really, really cold. And then that means that in the spring, when weather start to warm, like we're going to start seeing in a month or two, um, these trees will be ready to burst open with their new leaves and um, start the growing season all over again. And you'll notice, I'm wondering if you can see kind of the color that I'm seeing. The branch of this tree is kind of a, a, a brown, maybe a little bit gray, but in the bud, I'm seeing pink, I'm seeing yellow, and a little bit of red as well. Oh yeah, it's kind of red. I didn't notice that before. I like using my red one. <laughs> <laughs> They're gonna be very red in my picture. All right. Thank you so much to this garden space for letting us explore. I want to take you over to the other side of this park. So we are going to walk. Here are my feet walking through this garden. And we're going to be crossing over a path. You'll notice it's really muddy today. 
Um, but there is this concrete path that kind of runs right through this park. And so we're going to keep exploring. And often in the winter, we can find some really interesting pieces of nature that have actually fallen off maybe a tree or something else and are kind of lying here on the ground. And that's the case with this piece of nature that I just found. Have a look at that. So the tree that we were looking at earlier, we noticed that it didn't have any leaves. And that's because that tree lost all of its leaves in the fall. But this leaf came from a tree that loses its leaves or keeps its leaves all winter long. So I think this is probably a spruce tree, spruce needles. You can see they're very short, bright green color, and very, very thin as well. I'm drawing them as lines because <laughs> that's how I see them. I think that's a great technique. <laughs> now on trees that have needles that look like this, we can often find something that looks like this as well. So this is a cone and a lot of trees that are coniferous, coniferous, that keep their needles all year long, also produce cones. And so maybe you wanna draw this cone on a tree, maybe you wanna draw it floating in the air, maybe you wanna draw it at the bottom of your page. And I also wanna show you the top view of this cone. I think it's really interesting, looking at the shapes that this cone has created. Can you hold on to the cone for a moment? I'm gonna try and draw it just like, like I'm drawing roof shingles, because that's kind of how I see it. So I'm starting at the top after I did my big shape. And I'm just going through my whole cone. <laughs> I wonder what it will look like. I might do the rest of it afterwards, but I'm gonna do half of it, I think, right now. That's a great point, Raya. So as we're exploring, we don't have a ton of time today. So we're going to be moving through some of these pieces of nature pretty fast. But I wanna remind everyone that these are kind of artworks in progress. So don't feel like you have to finish today. And we're gonna be talking a little bit later about kind of the next steps of what we can do with our artwork. I think I'm gonna, once I, once I do them all, I might shade them in a little bit. Just to fill Perfect. it in. We'll see what happens. <laughs> great. That's the great thing about art is that I can do whatever I want and it's, it, there's no wrong or right answer. <laughs> it is so true. I'm gonna bring you over onto this side over here. And actually, I wanna point out this tree that's growing right here. So once again, we are seeing these kind of green and yellow and even some blue colors. I want to see if you can remember what um, what this is. What is this living thing? So if you're saying lichen, you are create correct. This is lichen. I was just going to say that I like it. <laughs> I like it. I like in the lichen, that's for sure. If we go a little bit further down, I also want to show you. Whoa, what happened here? So remember that plant that I was showing you that had all of those thorns? Well, here we're seeing a plant that doesn't have thorns and look at what happened. I think that some animal was coming over here and was probably chewing away at this bark. That's hard to draw. I guess I don't have to draw everything you're showing, but I'm gonna try and draw that on the side of my tree. If you can't draw maybe the shape of it, you can definitely draw maybe some of the colors. We're seeing some dark brown, especially compared to the gray of this, of this trunk and of the bark. We're seeing some dark brown, maybe some lighter brown, maybe even some yellow over here as well. Cool. So students, as you're following along, you, like I was saying, you don't have to draw everything that Jasmine's showing. You can draw the things that kind of you connect to more, um, but it's totally up to you. And you can draw them similar to how I'm drawing them or how Linda's drawing them, or you can draw them differently. Lots of options. Your artwork. 
All right, I'm gonna keep exploring. We're gonna move further across the park. And as we're exploring, I want you to think about this space. Maybe there is a park in your neighborhood that looks something like this. Maybe there's a park just down your street where you like to go in the summer or in the winter, in the fall or in the spring. Maybe it's somewhere you like to go and have a picnic or play soccer or even just go for a walk. And so maybe as we're looking at all of these pieces of nature, maybe you'd like to draw yourself in your artwork as well. Maybe you're kind of exploring, maybe you're playing, maybe you're sitting on the ground, but think about kind of the time that you spend in nature and how you like to interact with nature as well. This is super cool, Jasmine. <laughs> I'm just sure. noticing it's 30, my friends. We're going to go for a little bit longer, but then we can answer any questions people might have. Um, so I just thought I'd let you know the time as well, Jasmine. So I have one last piece of nature that I want to share with you all, and that is this. So my friends, this is a maple key. This might have fallen off of a maple tree. And in this part is actually where the seed um, it exists, but then maple keys have these kind of long, thin pieces attached to them. They kind of remind me of wings. And these maple keys help the seeds to fall and to travel on the wind and to move to further distances where they're able to kind of grow far away from the kind of mother or father tree that they fell from. Cool. All right. So, we've done a lot of exploring today. We've looked at many different pieces of nature, and I'm so interested at this point to learn what your pieces of nature look like. So I'm going to ask Raya and Linda to share a little bit about their inspiration and their artwork. And while they're sharing, I invite anyone who's following along today to type in the comments, maybe some emotions you felt as we were exploring, or maybe a piece of nature that you drew on your page that you think is really cool. Raya, how about you share what you drew? Mm -hmm. So just like Wally and Annie, I really like trees. And so I started with kind of a big tree in the middle. And um, I drew it in blue because um, I feel like blue is kind of a fun color, even though the tree wasn't really blue. <laughs> um, that lichen color really jumped out at me. So I really enjoyed kind of doing the scribbles of lichen there. And then um, I agree with you that the top of the tree is just so it's like elegant the way it moves through the sky and how all the branches have these really cool shapes and uh, they're kind of graceful. So I enjoy doing those as well. And then, oh, I love that leaf shape. Um, and while I was drawing the leaf, it just seemed so friendly to me. And one, one of my little pokey, kind of the lobes of the leaf reminded me like of a hand waving. So I drew it into a hand that was waving at me because the leaf just seemed like so friendly somehow to me, it made me feel, feel welcomed into the park. And um, I kept the spruce needles near the ground or near the bottom of my picture because I, I know you found them on the ground. And then I wanted to do a really big cone because it just seemed so big the way you were showing it to me. It looked like something I'd really enjoy holding in my hand, um, the way it filled your entire hand right there. So I like drawing it that way. And I, I'm not very good at birds. That chickadee in the other picture turned out nicely, but I kind of just drew a quick bird here that was zooming over to the berries because I was imagining, oh my gosh, there's only one berry left. And so the bird's flying really quickly to get the berry. And yeah, and then the buds and the maple keys, I sort of drew them on the side because um, I felt like my main thing was like the tree and the big leaf and the cone and the others. The other parts of my collage were, were there, but they were less... Um, kind of less of a centerpiece for me. So thanks for letting me share, Jasmine. Thanks so much for sharing, Raya. It's so interesting to me to hear about kind of how you um, perceive the nature that we are exploring and the ways that you put it all together on your page to make this collage. Linda, I'd love to hear from you um, and a little bit more about your artwork and why you created what you did. Yeah, so when you talk about urban park and uh, like what does your park looks like that just makes me think of we 
have a lot of trees. Even if we live in the cities, we have lots of trees, and trees have leaves. Each leaf kind of have their like, like their own little story, which is why I drew. Sorry, <laughs> I drew this scene where it kind of like a story of the leaf, where it comes from. It comes from an urban park. That's the tree where it came from. And also, when you showed us the big tree over there, it kind of just gives me a very peaceful, mesmerizing feel to it. It reminds me of Mother Nature, so I kind of drew a face with the hyssop and added a little earring with a little comb here. And this whole picture just reminds me how nature is so resourceful and so graceful, so helpful to us all. And it's such a great pleasure to have that kind of resources around. Amazing! Thank you, Linda. I love the perspectives that you took, and I love that you're thinking about kind of the diversity of nature that we can find here in the city, and also relating it back to kind of your own experiences with nature and your own um, kind of local nature that you like to visit. It's so amazing, and it's so interesting how different the two artworks that we created are. Um, it just goes to show that everyone has their own kind of perspective, their own creative mind, and that we can really come together and create completely different things um, based on what we're seeing. All right. So I want to talk a little bit more about this idea of becoming a nature champion, which I talked about right at the beginning of our live stream today. So I said that it was kind of being an advocate for nature, being a spokesperson for nature. And I want to introduce this idea of environmental stewardship, which is a way to take becoming a nature champion to kind of the next level. So environmental stewardship is really this idea of taking care of something that doesn't belong to us. In this case, that would be the environment. So taking care of the environment. Now creating these pieces of artwork and getting inspired by nature and connecting to nature is a great way to perform environmental stewardship, especially when we're sharing it with others and getting others excited about nature as well. And that brings me to our next live stream. Our next live stream is on April 22nd. And it's all about Earth Day. We are going to be celebrating the Earth. We are also going to be talking about different ways that we can take care of our Earth. And that's where we need your help. I want to see all of the amazing artworks that were created today or that you are inspired to create in the future. So like we mentioned before, maybe you didn't get a chance to finish during our live stream today. Maybe you have more space on your paper, or maybe you wanna create an entirely new artwork now that you've had a little bit of experience. You can imagine you might be thinking about a piece of nature in your local park, in your backyard, on your street, that maybe you want to draw. With your artwork, we would love for you to send those into us, and we would love to share those pieces of art on our next live stream. So celebrating our connections to nature that we're making and inspiring others to make those connections as well. You can send any artwork related to our live stream today to my email address, jasmine.thompson at trca.ca. And we cannot wait to see them. So exciting. We're so excited to see them and then also share them with others. Now, I've been doing a lot of talking, we've been doing our exploring, and we've uh, <laughs> created some pieces of art. Now I'm wondering if there are any questions or comments from the chat that we can address. Goodbye. And so, oh, there we go. There we go, I think I'm in. Um, so Jasmine, we haven't had uh, questions or comments in the chat because I think people are too busy drawing, but I was wondering, um, what is your, like, when you go outside, what is something that you look at that you think of from an artistic perspective? Like, forget the science of it. I mean, I love science, but forget the science part about what something's called or how it relates to the habitat. But what is something you go out and you're like, oh my gosh, I just love how that piece of nature does this. That's a great question, Raya, and that's something that I think about all the time when I'm when I'm outside. Um, it's something that I also like to do when I'm outside with others is 
kind of get people excited about nature who are with me. So I'm like, hey, look at this or look at this. Um, I think one of the things that I do almost every time I go outside, it's one of the things that I shared with us during our live stream today is just looking up. So, so often I find that while I'm walking down the street, I'm walking, I'm looking at my feet, I'm looking at what's around me, but I forget sometimes to look up. And if we look up, let me see if I can show you here. We can see that the trees that are in the city are so amazing and we have these amazing shapes being created. Sometimes you'll even find animals in the trees. Sometimes you might find drays, which are squirrel nests or bird nests in our trees. Um, so it really pays sometimes to just look up at the sky, admire the trees that are in our city um, and connect to nature in that way. That was so beautiful. I almost felt like I was going into an art gallery for a second. <laughs> I could walk down the street and be like, not that I'm in an art gallery and what, you know, what would be on the walls of the gallery, but it's actually on my street. It's Very so beautiful. true. All right. So I think that um, I'm just going to double check to make sure that we didn't have comments come in. I know that people were very busy drawing and We've got, um, yep, so our, our chat staff have helped with um, putting into words some of the things we shared in the chat of the live stream. But uh, over to you, Jasmine, maybe for some closing words. Awesome. Thanks so much, Raya. So thank you, everyone who tuned in today or maybe watching this in the future as well. Um, I encourage you all to get outside, explore nature. Um, it's March break next week. March break is coming up. So during March break, while you have that break off school, maybe go for a walk outside. Maybe go to your local green space or park um, and connect with nature. Make some nature connections. Maybe you can even look for some lichen on the trees in your local green space. And lichen can be anywhere. It could be on the benches, it could be on the sidewalk. So have a look out for that. Um, I encourage you all as well to come to our next Nature in Your Classroom live stream, which will be on April 22nd, um, which is a Friday. We're celebrating Earth Day. And we'll pop the link in the chat uh, for you to check that out as well. All right, well, thank you so much everyone for tuning in today and have a great rest of your day. Bye everyone.